No, skepticism is awesome. It's, there you like go. A, <laughs> it's a superpower. It's like you can see the matrix code. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Edward, and I am a thought reader. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, okay? It used to happen to me all the time, and, and I want you to know, be, and I also, I, I do psychic things, and, and I'm a skeptic, and it's very confusing, but, but the idea here is, I want you to know, before I go any further, I can't just look at a specific person and then go ahead and tell everybody else what that person is thinking. That would be a nightmare for me, okay? <laughs> especially at the Dragon Con. So I want you to know I have to focus with specific people on specific things and then sometimes amazing things can happen. So before I take a look at your thoughts, which I will try and do, I'm going to uh, just test the audience out a little bit. I'm going to try and send you one of my thoughts, okay? <laughs> so what I want you to do, it's very important in the work that I do, that you relax. That's right, so I want everyone to take a deep cleansing breath. Just want to see your shoulders relax, your chakras become blissful. Very good. And relax, okay? Do not try and second guess what I'm going to tell you. Just relax and we'll see what happens. I will send you a thought. So open your minds, we'll see what happens. I want everyone to think of a number between 0 and 50. Both of the digits are odd and both of the digits are different. Here we go. Don't say it, just think it. Okay, just by a show of hands, how many people immediately saw the number 37? Raise your hand. Whoa, that's pretty good. That's good. 35 over here? Someone is, is your thing at 35? That's good. So, uh, if you work with me, we can try and get some things to happen. So, sir, did you, you came to see the psychic this afternoon, or are you basically a skeptic? Okay, so and I want you to tell everyone who did, never met before, you have no idea what's, what's going to happen, correct? Correct. So, did you have a specific question you would like me to focus on? No. Okay, because right away, the first thing I'm getting about you is that you have a, a, a restless disposition in a lot of ways. You are a person who... Uh, you don't like to stay in the same place for very long. In other words, you like creature comforts, but you, there's a restless side to you. So I'm going to say in the next four to six months, there's going to be a very big change for you, a job title advancement or some kind of maybe even something of your own. Ever thought of having a business of your own? Yeah, so you're working on that right now. But you're going to do that. You will, trust me. Who are you going to believe, him or me, ladies and gentlemen? He's going to have a business of his own. Thank you very much for helping me with that. So, oh no, please, please. I am only an instrument of these unseen forces. I, I really just try to help. So, um, I, we do have a microphone here, so I would like to take some questions, sort of like, I mean, you've all heard of Sylvia Brown and... And you, yes, and John Edward, and by the way, I am no relation to John Edward whatsoever. I was using the name Edward way before he came along, way before he graduated drama school. So, uh, if anybody has a specific question, do you have a, you're going to step right up there, sir? All right, go ahead. What, what, but before, let me, let me just see if I can get an impression from you right away, uh, before you say anything, okay? Uh, you're a very competitive person. Is that true? Yes. Is that, that's true. What do you guys see this stuff every day at work or something? He's competitive, okay? You're competitive. You can, you can get frustrated easily. And I'm guessing, well, did I say guessing? I am feeling a very strong, <laughs> a strong feeling that uh, what you're going to ask me has to do with, with something where you're weighing something. Go ahead, ask your question. We'll see. What did you want to know? Weighing you. You're weighing me. Good. Well, that's what we want yeah. to know. Could I be your first volunteer? I had a yes. Go, would you have a question or you want me no, to just read your mind? That was my only mind? question for now. Okay. That's fine. Was that okay with you? You don't have a question? Could I be, could I be your first volunteer when you 
when you have a, when you're going to ask for one. No, I want you to ask a question. Oh, it makes it so much right easily oh, okay, easier right. for me. Otherwise, I'll just make right. something up. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what are some questions that we could ask you as volunteers? That's an easy one. Okay. Well, let's see. How about love and money? <laughs> we got love and money. We've got travel. We've got. I, do, I don't take any. Uh, already, I made one audience member disappear. See how easy this is. Anyway, uh, they thought it was going to be something really profound. I'm sorry. This is a skeptic track. I'm going to show you how to do these things. If you stay around, you can you can become psychic. So at the next party yeah. you go to, you will be able to. What you sat down, sir. That was one of my questions. Okay, well, the, the questions are, most people want to know about love and money. I mean, what else is there? Think about it. Uh, travel, we have, uh, I was going to say, I do not take medical or legal questions. That is a big no-no. I am not doing Sylvia Brown here. I think that's not a good idea, legally. So, I won't touch any medical or legal questions. And you had one, didn't you, sir? <laughs> You guys are not easily impressed. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out on that. All right, go, go ahead, the person at the microphone. Yeah, can you read my thoughts in Spanish? Because I'm from Mexico City. I don't, I, I don't speak Spanish, but I can, I can tell right away the first thing that's on your mind is you, how are you going to get home? Really? How no. are you going to get home to, 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 to where you came from? You want to go back. Really? No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know? I don't know if that's what I'm... Thinking about uh, okay, just uh, in my, yeah, just in my that, evolution trip. You hear what he said? He's just, just in my evolution about, trip, but it's what? no, no, just in my evolution trip, maybe. It's what? Yes, in my evolution trip, evolution. In your evolution trip, not in my place to. I don't want to go back to Mexico City. I love Mexico City. It's a right. very nice city. I don't know if you've been there right. before. Right. Yes, I have. Yes. But it's it's very nice. Yes. And uh, but but I'm just get here to Atlanta. I just arrived in January and I will spend like, uh, I don't know, maybe... What's, two what's your question, sir? That you gotta you keep can, moving. That if you can read my thoughts in Spanish, you said you don't? Okay, well, uh, here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna say about you right away, okay? You are a person, and you can agree to this or not, sometimes you try and do too many things at once. <laughs> Am I right, I'm, sir? I'm gonna... No, it, it, you are not guessing. I'm, no, I am, really? not, I am not guessing. That's not I me. That's telling. true. My, my Trust job me, is not true. a guessing job. My job is to tell you what, I, what I'm seeing. But what you're, I'm not seeing see, is, you're not seeing who I am. Well, I don't... Uh, well, who you are is irrelevant. Your question <laughs> is, how can, you, how can you focus? So what I'm going to say is this. You have a lot of different strengths. I can see that right away. Focus is what's going to happen for you in the next four to six months. You're going to focus on your greatest strength. Like, I'm going to use an example. This may not be you, but just to illustrate my point. Maybe you sing, you paint, you write, you do all these creative things. That's why I said there's so many things I feel are going on. In the next four to six months, you are going to focus on your greatest strength, and you're going to be very successful. So successful that you won't even have to go back to your homeland unless you really want to, and you're going to be very successful with that. Focus, that's the key for you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, it's just a gift. Thank you. Yes. Hey there. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if you can do this question, but uh, I'm wondering uh, what, what we're having, uh, boy or girl? This time it's a girl. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Anything Hi. you want to add to that? Uh, I'm seeing the name Priscilla for some reason. I don't know why. Really strange. Just came to me. Is that is, that, is there a, a Margaret or a Priscilla in your back? Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, there is. Yeah, who's who's Margaret? Uh, that that would be uh, my uh, mother-in-law. Thank you, yes. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Yes. Hello. Um, I was just curious. You said you were a psychic and a skeptic. What exactly did it mean? Are you skeptical about yourself? Like, <laughs> Well, <laughs> let me explain how that works. I have many books that I've written about psychic things. I was a, I still am, a professional mentalist or magician. So when you do mentalism and you do magic, it opens a lot of channels that the normal average person is not aware of, especially if you perform a lot. So uh, I am a skeptic because I have not seen anything that has convinced me that there is something tangible that I could say 
make something happen on command. However, I did get this woman's mother-in-law's name, so who knows? So I am a skeptic by nature, but I keep my mind open. And that's the reason why if I didn't have an open mind, I couldn't do this work that I do. Because I am hopeful. We have a challenge. I work with the IIG. We have a $50,000 challenge. If you can show us something that's repeatable that we can test in the lab, you get $50,000. And we also have a $5,000 finder's fee. That means if you lead us to somebody who wins, uh, not only would they basically change physics and science as we know it, which would be a history-making event, but you will get $5,000 finder fee. And it also makes you more or less eligible for the million-dollar challenge which Randy does. So to answer your question, there's no, no reason in the world I cannot be both. Is there? I just wanted to hear what you had to say. So, so, so let, let, let's see how well I do. Do you have a specific question? Wait, let, let me see what I'm getting about you. Uh, you tell me whether this makes sense. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that would be obvious. So what I'm getting is, 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 is there's some new things coming your way in the next four to six months. I see a brand new horizon. I see uh, uh, incredible, incredible change and potential for you. I think you're about to embark on something that is a dream that you've had for a long time. You've known this since you were a little child that you were going to do this. And you've said, this is what I'm going to do. And guess what? By October, November, December, you're going to see that form and you're going to have that dream come true. Does that make sense to you? I'm working on a television show right now that I'm writing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See, you don't even have to ask the question. Just think it for me. Yes. Hi, I have a love question. Oh, a love question. I love love questions. Yes, go ahead. When and how should I bring up the topic of marriage to my boyfriend? <laughs> Where is my pendulum? I have a pendulum for answering these questions. Here is your problem in a nutshell. What's your name? Jessica. I had a feeling I was going to talk to someone named Jessica today. This is amazing. Jessica, here's the problem. You need to know what you want and tell that person what you want. Do not wait for him. It's a catch-22. You're a very strong-willed and independent person. He is waiting for you to tell him what you want. Is that not the truth? Yeah, that is the truth. That makes so total tell sense. him, don't ask him, and don't wait for him. Tell him what you want, and then you'll be very happy in your love life. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Yes. Will I be able to raise the $500 needed for SkepTrack to be in the 2012 parade? That's the by question. when? Do we have a deadline or mm. by the end of this weekend? Yes, by the end of this weekend. I think you're going to get very close to it within, within three or four hundred dollars. Yes, I do too. <laughs> let, let me try something with this lady here. Th this lady here, we have never met before, is that correct? Yeah. We did? No, we haven't met before. This is very important because I want to make that very clear to the rest of the audience. Now. I'm getting an impression from you, and I want you to help me with something. So hold your question, but let, can we just try something real quick? Sure. What I want you to do, I have a pad of paper here and a pencil. I always use pencil in case I want to change my mind. <laughs> now, if it's not too painful for you or too difficult, what I'd like you to do is think of the initials of a person who has passed to the other side. Someone, it doesn't have to be somebody close to you. And that's why I say if it's a painful thing for you, I don't want you to do it. I want you to, somebody who you feel good about. And I'm going to try and get that, but I want you to think of those initials, see them in large, bold letters in your mind, okay? Are you thinking of it right now? Mm -hmm. Don't say it and don't move your lips. It makes it real easy for me to get it if you do that. What was your name? Catherine. Okay, I'm going to put the pad and the pencil down here. Catherine, would you mind stepping forward? Let's give Catherine a round of applause. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please. Catherine, you thought of a specific person. It wasn't painful for you, was it? Okay, that's good. And what was that person's name? Flo Course. Flo Course? With, with an F and a C? That's amazing. 
<laughs> I, I always like to ask, did anyone else think of the initials FC in this audience? Anyone in the back, by any chance? Nobody? You thought of FC? I thought about C. Well, pff, he thought about C. Well, but w would you go ahead and, and read what I wrote on the back of the pad here so everyone can see? What are the initials that I wrote? FC. FC. You can show that to everybody if you would. <laughs> FC. Okay, and the one thing I want to say about this person before you go is, is there is a garden that this person is in, very beautiful rose garden, and there's flowers all around this person. They're very happy with the flowers that they've grown. Did they have a garden when they were alive? For my great-grandmother, I didn't really know her. But... She did, trust me. <laughs> give, give her, now you had a specific, no, no, let her go back to the microphone and, and do a specific question here. You had a specific question, go ahead. I just wanted to know about my future, like, what do you see? I see great success in a very strong creative field. I feel that you have a very strong, unfulfilled creative aspect, is that true? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's unfulfilled, okay? I mean, it takes a little work. It's not going to happen overnight. You have to develop patience. One of the things that you have that, that can get in the way of your success is you get impatient. Is Probably. that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Well, some people don't. And uh, uh, I think you will be very successful in your future, but be patient and look, look towards this creative thing because I feel that that's, that's really very strong for you. What is, do, you, do you like dance or sing or something like that? No. You don't I, do any of those things? Um, I draw. I you draw. I Would you all agree that's a creative thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can make a lot of success for yourself. Stay with the drawing. Thank you. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take two more here, and then we'll, then we'll take a little break and talk for a little. We, we need to talk. Go ahead. This lady right here. Will I be a musician when I grow up? Will you what? Be a musician when I grow up? Absolutely. <laughs> I hear music already all around you. The thing is, you have to decide what instrument. Is it piano? You're, you're... Yes. Yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with it. Now this lady here, you look very serious. But Perhaps. go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask a serious question though. Um as you far were? as the yes, the mentalism and the magician aspect of things, do you find that you get a lot of people who actively like will attempt to manipulate you into guessing things incorrectly? I don't guess things in Well, but to know incorrect information, how's that? Uh, what, wait, say the last part? Uh, instead of guessing, to know incorrect information, do they try to manipulate you? No. No? No, because the thing of it is, part of the secret of being successful in any psychic work, and this is, I'm going to share with you, the big secret, which is in, in my literature. And, and get ready for this, because this is the key secret. Are you ready? Make bold statements as if they are fact, period. So if I make bold statements as if they are fact and I'm up here under the headlights, who's going to argue with me? So I cannot be manipulated because I have no competition in what I do. You have to think that way. And that's both a danger and a skill. So it's, it's pure arrogance. <laughs> that's, that's actually what I was looking for. Thanks. There you go. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I have a love question. Mm. But the love question is not about my love life. It's about a f friend. Mm. I'm going to think very... <laughs> right. All right. Now, I'm going to concentrate and think yes. very strongly towards you. Okay. Now... Wait, wait, towards me? Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to open my mind. Okay. okay. Now, wait. Here, before you go any further, I want you to know the reading that I'm giving you is for you. Okay. So it's very difficult for me to bounce from you and go to somebody else. But I'm a really excellent conduit. Okay. Is that um, a good dodge? You like that? All right. So, so go ahead. Let's see how okay. well I do. Because okay. how are you going to know the answer to this till you go to the third person? But go ahead. What's the, um, what, stay, you have to ask a specific question. Okay. I've written oh, you got a specific it on text. question. Good, good, good. Yes. It's about a couple. Yeah. They are separated. Mm -hmm. Will, in the next, say, six months, mm -hmm. this couple come back together and find true and lasting happiness? Well, 
here's what I'm going to say. I don't, I, again, I don't like to bounce from you to two people I it's, know nothing it's, about. It's the vibes, the, the vi vibrations of the cosmos are emanating from you, sir. <laughs> I'm thinking. It's difficult really, for me to go to somebody else. But I will say this. These two people have some problems. Oh. They have major drama going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what I will say about them is, unfortunately, it may take time, but I feel that if they get back together, they're going to find that the things that broke them up to begin with are not only still there, but they're even more exaggerated. Oh. So if they get some therapy or counseling or some meds or something, there's a good, there's a good possibility. But they have to do some work on that, all right? You know, the meds, the meds, that's really interesting that you say that. Yes, Same it thing is, with isn't counseling. It? You pulled that out. That's, yes. that's very true. Well, I so. have my card here. You can yes. give them to your friends. I will be thank happy you. to I'll, consult I'll, with I'll them. I'll report back. Okay, thank you. thank you. Very good. All right, one more, one more. Um, from the vibe that you get from me, am I going to be a very successful fictional writer? No, wait, I, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing in on this. Here's the thing, there's a lot of distractions around you, is that true? I mean, I get a lot of like white noise and shh, all these things going on all the time. It's like, if you can find a place, either within yourself or some place, where you can settle and be in one place and not be distracted, you will be very successful. But you need to find a way to cut out the distractions. And like I said to the other person, focus. Then you will be successful. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You have a big family or something like that? Um, I would say a family of five is big. <laughs> yeah. So find a place and you'll be, you'll be very successful. Okay, I'm going to stop now for with Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So... Now, uh, here's what I'm going to say because I will be at the, I'm at the IIG table and I'm going to be there doing readings. I'll be there later today and I'll be there most of the day tomorrow and so forth. And if you see me in the hall and you want to talk to me, I'll be happy to talk to you. But remember, I'm a skeptic, okay? I don't have any supernatural power that I'm aware of. <laughs> I really don't. If I had a supernatural ability, do you think I'd be here today? <laughs> I would be at the racetrack. Or I would be somehow manipulating uh, a, 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 telecommunication, a telecommunication satellite, just moving it a sixteenth of an inch off its orbit. Could you imagine if somebody could do these sorts of things that we, in the world of science fiction, we enjoy them. It's science fiction. Science fact is really what I'm after, okay? But within science fact, I, I have an open mind because I know that things happen to people. I have had things happen, particularly as a mentalist, that have made me wonder. But when I look at the facts and I sit down and think it through, generally speaking, there's, there's, a, there's a reason for it, okay? So, some of my books that I brought with me uh, I, I spent many years doing seance, okay? That's, I, that's my preferred method of uh, entertaining. Because in a seance room, people are predisposed to all sorts of ghostly visions and feelings. And when you're in a dark room, amazing things happen, okay? You, you, have, you have 12 people hold hands, they're gonna, and you suggest, and you, 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 you pick up things. Just like I can, pick, I can pick up things right now from this audience that would amaze you, okay? For example, let me look around here. This, this gentleman over here sitting down in front. Is there any way I can know the name of your hometown? <laughs> but but I, don't, I don't, really, don't really know you, so that'd be difficult, right? Okay, let me, let, me, let me just try and focus in it, but I, you have to get a picture of it for me in your mind, okay? A, a mentalist or a medium uses pictures, so in your mind, we all think of things in pictures. Before we create something, we see a picture of it. I'm seeing in your mind, I want you to think of your hometown. I'm seeing a huge bridge. A bridge uh, going over a river. And uh, it's kind of an industrial atmosphere. I'm getting the name Stockport. Does that mean anything? Close. Close? Close. Well, close is good enough for a medium. <laughs> this is another key to mediumship. 
close. The too perfect theory, I write about it in my books. If I said exactly, if I said you were from Manchester, you'd say that was some sort of trick, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. Uh, but if I'm close, and Stockport is near Manchester, isn't it? Yes. yes. Uh, then you would say, well, you know, if, he, if it was a trick, he probably would have gotten that dead on. But he didn't. He was close. So it's the, the, that's how we increase our believability as mediums and psychics is by being, and, and it's beautiful. This is one of the reasons I fell into mentalism is because when you're wrong, you're right. You can't do that in regular magic. If I say a dove is going to come out of my sleeve, it better be a dove. And it better be there when I want it to be. You can't be wrong with it. With mentalism and psychic work, it increases your believability when you're off. So figure that out. So we as human beings, when we see somebody like Sylvia Brown and she says, ah, blah, you know, I, uh, I think you're, you're going to probably die of cancer, you know. Is this helpful? I mean, thank you, but people fill rooms to talk to these, to these mediums. So mediumship is an interesting thing. I'm, I'm fascinated by it because we want to believe. And uh, Joe Nickel talked about it last night when they were talking about monsters. We want to believe. I want to believe. But the only way I'm going to believe, all we have is science. And that's what skepticism is about. So we have science. Let's work with that. And that's why if there are people here, and I am serious, you have some sort of claim, we want to test it. And we don't want to test it because we want to debunk it or we want to make some reality show. We want to work with you. And we want to set up a protocol that's just between the two of us, we, or three or four. We sit down, we make a protocol that's agreeable to everybody, and then we test it. Because what if, you know, I'm, I'm a person, I grew up with the Twilight Zone and Ray Bradbury, and what if, you know, what if? So. My books are about the what if, but I try and tell you how you can use the five senses to create the illusion of a sixth. Okay, that's what a mentalist does. They're all, they're all normal abilities that anybody can learn. So I'll take some questions to that side of what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to just let it ride. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about guerrilla skepticism, which is my brand of skepticism which means actually going out and doing things and not just talking about it. So I'm, uh, today I'm talking about it, but I really prefer to get out there and actually do things. And if you go to my website, you can see where I actually punked Sylvia Brown. How many people have seen that video? Anybody in this room? Oh, a few people. Good. Yes. Actually went to her performance and, uh, well, you go to my website and you'll see it. And my whole idea was you're never going to convince an audience that she's a phony. Because they're there and they've paid and they wouldn't admit it anyway. But I got to her. In other words, she knew that I knew about what she's doing. And she did not like it. So uh, I'm not out to debunk. All I'm out is to say, you know what? If you go and you lie to people and you tell them you're murdered or your missing child is alive when the, the, later on the child is found dead, that's wrong. And that's not magic and that's not mentalism. That is a grief vampire and I think that's something that is growing and now we have on the style channel a new medium she's called the medium next door and she's just like everybody else and her byline says she raises her family by the day and raises the dead by night <laughs> this is what we're dealing with you know and it's fine but let's see the proof, because a psychic detective, they, she says she's a psychic detective and this and that, I'm not going to mention any names. There's no track record. There is no track record. No psychic has ever helped with evidence of any kind that was credible enough to be able to help or save or find a missing or murdered child. And if you can show me and point to me to a case, I'll be happy to listen to you. So any questions about mentalism and its relationship to what I did? None. Perfect. All right. Well, then, uh, I guess I'm done. Oh, I, I want to say I have uh, some flyers for my uh, a book that's coming out. Feral House Books is, oh, good, a couple questions, is going to be producing my book. It's called Psychic Blues. And Psychic Blues is about what we're talking about. It's about working as a quote-unquote professional psychic, which is what I did. The whole time I was working as a professional psychic, I was also working with Michael Shermer at Skeptic Magazine. So I walked both sides of the, 
of the tightrope. And it's a black humor, it's a book, it's a, a narrative, non-fiction book about what it's really, really about in the psychic business, which is a multi, multi-million dollar business. And I want to say, in case you didn't know, we are in the, the golden age of the con right now. And a lot of people think you look back to the Victorian times and when people did seances and spiritualism and you think that was bad, take a look around at what's going on today in our society and you will start to see that we are in the biggest shell game in history. So if you'd like to find out how to become aware of how we are being manipulated, and I'm not going to go into politics or anything else, all you have to do is turn on the style channel and see the medium next door. And, and the ghost hunters and the paranormalists and all of these things. But anyway, I won't get on my soapbox. Go ahead, you had a question. Yeah, I've, I've watched you and, and folks that do you do do the co sort of cold reading stuff. Oh, is I, that what it was? Well, yeah, sort of. <laughs> That's what I would call it. Mm. And I understand how you, how you do that. What right. I don't understand is how you come up with a specific hometown place or specific... Yes. initials and yes. I would really like you if you can to share that because that stuff just blows my mind because I understand using sort of probabilities but mm. that doesn't apply to either of those no it doesn't yeah these are magician secrets <laughs> and uh, I, I can reveal some of the psychology that I use which I pointed out but I prefer to keep the actual mentalist details to myself and I'll tell you why we have a thing in the world called illusion how many let's let's do it this way there's illusion and there's disillusion which do you prefer disillusion who said that well come and talk to me later one guy raised his hand all right no the point is as an entertainer it's kind of like this people you know when I do a seance I don't, I don't, if there's somebody hires me to do a dramatic seance and I go into a room and I set it all up and they pay me a lot of money and I do a disclaimer. See, I don't like to do disclaimers. I get in a lot of trouble with skeptics about this because really that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to come out and say, everything I do is phony. I'm a complete charlatan. Well, there's a lot that goes on with that. Number one, if you're an effective performer at the end, even if you insist that everything you did was a trick, you're still going to have a good percentage of the audience saying, no, he's real, he's just, he's covering up for his real powers. He just doesn't want people to know, okay? This really happens. So, it would be like, if I gave a disclaimer, I'm trying to answer your question, uh, before I started what I did today, it would, to me, it'd be like going to a very fancy French restaurant and right before they serve you your meal, the waiter comes out and says, by the way, this came out of a can, okay? In other words, I want wonderment because to me, wonderment is how we're going to get people to get involved in skepticism and thinking critically. If I just give away a secret and say, well, this is how I did it, you're going to go away and you're completely, you're like, oh, it was a trick. That's not my job is to give you that kind of information. I want you to retain the wonderment but understand that it's a totally natural thing. So, without giving away the exact secret, for example, there is a woman standing in this room right now who is thinking of a specific word. She's had a choice of thousands of words all day long. Would you please stand up? Is there a lady thinking of a specific word? This lady right here? Yes. You've had a word on your mind all afternoon, right? right. Is there any way I could know what it is? has to do with automobiles in some way? Because no. I was getting the word petroleum. No. What was it? Pertinent. Pertinent. Well, I got the first two letters right. Give her a round of applause for helping me out. <laughs> See, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. Pertinent. Hmm. Anyway, thanks. Anyway, uh, so, so yeah, there are methods that I am using, but to give you the methods and to explain them to you, I, I don't want to destroy that illusion. I want you to, your interest to be piqued. And also, I'd like to sell some books. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? I, I mean, 
I, I, want, I want wonderment in the world. I really do. Or I wouldn't be at Dragon Con, okay? I mean, you know, I used to go to Gallifrey One when I was younger and all the, all the science fiction conventions in Hollywood because I live in Hollywood. So, you know, this is a world that's really important because we all are here because we suspend our disbelief. So why should I... I mean, skeptic track's a great thing, but I don't want to pour cold water on everything, okay? But suffice it to say, as far as I know, I am not in charge of any supernatural abilities whatsoever. And that's all you really need to know. It's, it's all, it all can be learned, and it's all a skill. And if you see John Edward, you all know who the real skilled person on the John Edward show is, don't you? The editor. <laughs> that show films for six hours, and they cut it down to a 45, 50-minute show. So, guess what? Anyway, that's the trick. So, you had a question. Yeah, I was thinking about the, uh, the 37 trick. Yeah. Um, and so, I wasn't thinking about 37 at first. Right. But I was eventually. And the reason was, you know, you said both numbers have to be even. So, yes. that eliminates all the 40s and all the 20s. That's right. You said both numbers, so that eliminates the single digits. That's right. So, you're pretty much left with, like, Ten numbers. That's right. So how do you? It's still a one in ten chance, though. So how did you yeah. get thirty-seven? One in ten. I mean, I'm thinking also people probably have a tendency to not pick eleven and thirty-three. Yeah. Um, this this is what is called. I'm only going to answer it by saying yeah. this because he's asking me again to give away a specific. Let me, let me back up just a second. One of the reasons why I don't give away specific secrets unless I wrote them. Okay is because there are people who's, who have made a living developing these methods. And it's almost like me taking food off their table for me to just spill it and say, oh, this is how it's done, you know, without giving, even if I gave them credit for it. But that is what's called a psychological force. Can you tell me if I'm getting close? Pardon me? Can you tell me if I'm getting close? Because I was thinking number in the 40s, right? But that's so not, I have to go That's not an odd number. I know, but both the digits I was thinking are of the different. 20s, like, is, it, is there like a convergence point? Yeah, there, it's a it's okay. a psychological force, and if it's if you it's a verbal deception because psychics and mentalists use verbal deceptions. We don't always use props. We verbally deceive you. For example, if I if I said, oh, I don't know, I'm going to give that one away. Uh, l let me let me give you an example, just real quick. I'll give you one that, that you can you can figure this out. Okay, think about it. Now you never met me, did you? No. You have no idea who I am or what I'm doing, correct? No. All right. What I want you to do is think of your telephone number, your, your cell phone number, okay? okay? I want you to think of it in block numbers in your mind so that I can get it, okay? And uh, here we go. Don't forget the area code, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you as I'm doing this, is there any way I could know your telephone number? Oh, you can probably guess the area code pretty easy. <laughs> well, but I couldn't get... No, I, I would be surprised if you got my exact phone number. Okay, so you're, you're and you, would you consider yourself a skeptic? Yes. Pencil's running low here. <laughs> okay, I've written down something. Would, would you mind coming up on the stage here? Let's give him a round of applause, please. <laughs> a nice, clear voice. Read what I wrote here nice and loud so everyone can hear it. Read it. That's my telephone number. Thank you. Give him a round of applause for helping me out. <laughs> okay. All right. Think about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> another question. I understand what you're saying about not wanting to give away your secrets, but yes. what do you say, for instance, when the little old lady comes and says she's spending her life savings so that she can go to seances to talk to her dead husband? Mm. How, do you, how do you justify what do you say to her? Because I, don't, I don't take clients like that. I would never be in that position. I would never take any savings from anybody like that. That's, that's, that's what I'm against. Do you, in, but do you feel... But you said you're a skeptic. Do you yes. not feel some moral obligation to kind of set that lady straight and say you, I you do. can't do that? I do. And but then she says, well, I, I know he does it. I know he talks to my husband. How, 
how do you address that without giving away trade secrets? Well, that's a good question, and I, I, I address that in some of my books. As you know, if you've listened so far and paid attention so far, I use a lot of humor in my act. Now, when I am hired to do a psychic demonstration by a corporate, like I do corporate things or private parties or whatever, it's not my job to educate the audience. It's my job to entertain them. But what I do is I try and inject, as I'm doing my act, skepticism, humor. I am not a dark, doom and gloom type of a performer. I am not a Sylvia Brown, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> okay. So my point is, I, I'm not there to, I'm, they, a, a company pays me to give them this wonderment. Now, if a little old lady came up to me after the show, and said, help me get in touch with my dead, my dead husband, I would just say, you know, I don't, I don't do those things. What I did is an entertainment. And I would be honest with that person. So I never put myself in that position. There have been times when I've come pretty darn close to it, but I've always pulled back from that. Because, once again, if you, if you inject skepticism and humor in, people are going to say, you know, it can't, it's an entertainment. Like, for example, when I, I did the seance at the Magic Castle for 14 years. It's called the Bloomin' Magic Castle. It's a proscenium event, you know? So you assume, sometimes wrongly, that when people come into the Magic Castle, they're going to accept the fact that what they're seeing is magic or an illusion, right? Unfortunately, I get people after the seance coming up and saying, how did you develop your powers? So, it's very difficult, and I think it, to finally answer your question as best I can is I use a lot of humor, and I think it's a case-by-case -case thing. Like in some situations, I'll, I'll have people come up to me after a show, and I don't want to give it away, and they'll say, how did you develop your powers? And I took this from Doctor Who. I say, I read a lot. <laughs> Just a great answer. It's a truthful answer. I read magic books. I read mentalism books. I read how to, you know, how to become a medium. So, you, you see what I'm saying? It's a case by case thing. You're not going to see me doing a church show, and you know, and a spiritualist church, and, and having little old ladies and saying, "Okay, we need to get together. I need to help you find, you know, Uncle Harry." And I just don't do that. And I'm totally against that. So. You won't see me do that. In fact, I try to crusade against that. But it's a very uphill battle, as you can probably understand. I think the irony to me of coming here and listening to this, this skep track is I can take this information back to a lot of friends and say, yeah. I saw this amazing psychic, and he was with the skep track, and he was a skeptic, and he yeah. did this. All they're going to hear is the amazing psychic part, and that's going right. to reconfirm their deeply held beliefs. Yeah, but see, that that's why are real. their deeply held beliefs. I can't change that, okay? <laughs> People have deeply held beliefs about a lot of weird stuff, okay? So, but, but then again, maybe one out of the five friends of yours might say, really? Well, that's pretty interesting that he was a skeptic and he was, he was there talking about what he does. So I can only help that one person. People who are dyed in the wool believers, forget it. There's nothing I can do. Thank okay? you. Sure, thank you. Mark, I want to do something entirely different. If you can read me, you'll understand when I say thank you for your whole attitude and track. Thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're back again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We might as well wrap up with you. How, how am I doing for time? Yeah, right there. You've got to be oh, well, I've got plenty of time. Go ahead. All right. This is to uh, continue from the first question I asked you. Yes. You actually you asked me a bunch of questions, yeah. but that's okay. What is my most significant love or money related secret? <laughs> that you don't have any, and you tell people that you have some. Hello? Test? My mic test. just went dead. Fine. Hello? 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 Are we both uh, off? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Test. It's that power yeah. thing again. I'm telling you, I drain. But keep your batteries and your credit cards away from me. Yes. <laughs> all right, sorry. It's I'll all talk right. as loud as possible. Okay. I will too. Have your... There we go. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not on. But. Have your uh, techniques or abilities actually enabled you to get laid? <laughs> <laughs> 
And, and if uh, so, are those techniques in the book that I might purchase? <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. I think... Uh, <laughs> Here's a, book, here's a book that I wrote on palmistry, okay? <laughs> palmistry to me is one of the most intimate forms of readings that you can imagine. Imagine yourself, sir. You're cradling a beautiful woman's palm in your hand. And you're, and you're okay. next to her. You don't have any props. All you have, maybe you have a breath mint. And you, you're, you're, okay. <laughs> you're telling this woman all her deepest, darkest secrets. And you're accurate as hell. And she's going, wow, this guy's a god. Right. There you go. Right here. It's all here. All right. This there book has this book has not only the, the charts, but it has my actual dialogues that, that I use. That uh, they're all here. Very so, good. So yeah, I would I would say. But in a very modest way, yes, it has helped me <laughs> curry favor with some of the great heads of Europe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's the only flaw. I was trying to what, get away the from the palm. Oh, you're trying to get away from the right, palm? Right, right. You know. Well, you know, one thing leads just to the, another, okay? The, <laughs> I can't help you with that. That's a, no. That was his comment. Yeah, that's his problem. Anyway, yes. Okay, um, you seem like a pretty successful guy. Successful? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Freudian. There you yes. go. Well, you know, right. I... Well, duh. do you believe in a kid takes after his father or mom? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so apparently I take after my mom. Yeah. She's not a very successful girl. Right. Or mom. Yeah, but so, you can make that a self-fulfilling prophecy by believing that. Well, Your job is to prove everybody wrong. Oh, well, no. I was actually just wondering, are you my dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you from California? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, gee, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I... Uh, it's not likely. It's not likely. Okay, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank God. Oh, oh, oh. That was cruel. I haven't had one a zinger like that since I was on radio. And normally we, we have a kill button for people like you. So. <laughs> yes. So my daughter has a question for you. Oh, a child question. This is sensitive. Um, I just want to ask. Will I be a grown-up when I grow up? <laughs> yes, you will be a grown-up. But my advice to you is to enjoy your youth. Enjoy your childhood and, and just relish every moment of being young. Because when you grow up, you'll look back and say, I want to be young again. And ride those horses. Do you like horses and animals? You do like animals? Is that true about her? Yeah. Because I see you doing something with animals when you grow up, like a veterinarian or something like that. Um, well, me. Oh, well. <laughs> you'll remember 30 years from now and you'll say, wow. And he was a skeptic, too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Now, um, oh, you have My one. question. Yeah, just oh, okay, my sure. question is, um, how do you address kids? Because I really, I personally don't much want her to have a sense of wonderment. I don't want her to look at the world and say that it's kind of, an illusion and that there are mysterious forces that you're going to have problems with I know. <laughs> I know. What are you doing at Dragon Con, number yeah. one? I mean, you're, you're but inculcating a real problem for yourself. But, but it's at all the right. skeptic track. And the part yeah, of, no, I know, I know. Yeah, part of what I don't want her to think is that things happen for no reason. I want right. her to think they happen for a reason. And so right. when we come here, I, I don't want her to think that you're literally plucking these answers out of the air. I, I kind of would like to buy your book and be able to tell her, well, that's, this is how that's he what does I'm, it. I'm, I'm here are, to say that, you know. that things can be plucked out of the air. It happens to us all the time. And in my book, uh, uh, Sense and Seance, I talk about, we have phrases in the language that we say all the time. We say, we say things like, off the top of my head, or that came to me out of the blue, or, you know, I just came to me from my gut level, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are things that are plucked out of the air. The difference is if somebody says they can make it happen on demand, mm -hmm. in other words, coincidences happen to all of us, and it mm -hmm. would be strange if they didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So coincidences, all these things that we are involved with in the paranormal, they happen. But if somebody says, I can make it happen here on the stage right now and pluck that thought from you, then you have to question that wonderment. So a magician creates wonderment, but a magician also uses, he uses illusion to show truth and truth to show illusion. Do you follow that? Mm -hmm. So the wonderment is only an element that's created between truth and illusion. Mm -hmm. 
So in the standard form of magic, that is what it's about. It's to show truth, mm -hmm. to make you question what you see. So that's what you have to try and show your, your daughter, is that when she sees something that doesn't look like it could possibly be mm -hmm. to question what, how does that work because mm -hmm. there's bound to be an answer there and if mm -hmm. there isn't what are you going to do you know that's why we were here to try to find that line that's between right intuition which i can see that you have in spades and magic which i don't well intu intuition is a totally natural thing mm -hmm. this is what i tell people your brain is a natural organ it works naturally it doesn't have anything supernatural about it if i say i have an intuitive feeling about something and I go with it. One of the things I learned, that's why I said, making bold statements as if they are facts. Mm -hmm. You go into a room, you just throw shit at the wall till it hits. <laughs> and you'd be surprised because people want the psychic to succeed. They will connect the dots. Excuse my French, but people want to believe so much that they will connect the most absurd things. Like if I say, let's try something right now. All right, I'm just going to pick somebody random in the audience. Uh, the gentleman right here, it's, that's you, sir. Getting something about a lawnmower? That you've been having trouble with a lawnmower and you're thinking about buying something to, for your yard work? Is that true? Okay, if it had been true, uh, would you be impressed? Yeah. So the point is, I, I, made a, I, went, I went out of my way to be very specific with that. But if I said this, now this is what a medium will do. I'm getting something about a lawnmower. Getting somebody who's having some problems, then they're considering either moving from their property or improving their property. Does that make sense to anybody in the audience? <laughs> that's different. If I point to somebody and I say specific, that's real magic, right? But what a medium will do, watch them the next time you see them on television. They'll throw something out and then they'll say, does that make sense to anybody? And suddenly someone will say, yes, me, and they'll just hone right in on that person. And they'll stay with that person until that person starts to show that they're not getting, you know, they start to look like, well, what's she talking about? What are you talking about? Then she'll just move on to somebody else. So it's a skill. That's all. You can call it a skill. I call it a curse in some ways. But yes. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Eight minutes and counting. Yes, sir. Since this is about skepticism, yes. from, uh, for the sake of argument, shouldn't we be skeptical that you are hiding special powers and you're going around... Absolutely! I want that. I want that so bad I can taste it. There's, there's a friend of mine, his name is Doc Shields, and he is, uh, he is in England, and he is one of, the, he's one of the first guys that did the original Loch Ness photos, hoaxes. And he is what you call a mage in England. And he is a master of magic and a master of enchantment and hoaxes and all these things we're talking about. And one of the things that he taught me is to give such a bad disclaimer that you protest too much. So what he'll do is he'll come out in a show and he'll say, I don't want anybody to think I have any powers at all. Don't come to me for lottery numbers. I don't do exorcisms. Just leave me alone. I have no, you know. Pretty soon the audience is going, wow, you know, what? What's his problem, you know? So you, you can create a whole different disclaimer by protesting too much. And, and I think that, and that's one of the things that Houdini was fa fam famous for. He didn't actually do it, but Sir Arthur Conan Doyle told, went around telling everybody that Houdini was, he actually had magical powers and that he became a magician in order to cover up for them, which I think is that is so spot on. That is the kind of publicity you want to have. Now, I leave it up to you to decide whether that's truth or fantasy. Because I think, and I'm going to go out on a limb here, I think all people, all of us, I don't care where you're from or what you do, we all have an intuitive ability. That's all it is. And if you go with it, you know, how many people know this is a fact? You, you hear the, your intuitive voice. You know, the psychics call it your... Uh, your uh, uh, inner, inner voice. Uh, your inner voice tells you something and then you go ahead and you act against it. Don't we all know that when we do that we wish we had list, listened to what our gut level told us? So is that natural? Is that supernatural? The unnatural part is that we don't listen to what our intuitive voice tells us. And I don't want to start sounding like Tony Robbins or something up here, but, but my point is it, it, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great, I want, 
as a performer, I want you to think that, but as a skeptic, no, I prefer you went away saying, you know, this guy was talking about skepticism. But if I was doing a straight on performance, yeah, that's, but that is the illusion that I seek to, uh, to create. He's not too happy with that either. Well, <laughs> I can't please everybody, folks, you know, I mean, yes, go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm a mental health counselor. Yes. And uh -oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, uh, I use, uh, I observe a lot of body language and micro expressions mm -hmm. and things from people mm -hmm. in, in the kind of work that I do. Neuro linguistic how, programming? Do yes. I wanted to know how much of that plays a part when you're doing your mentalism. Not so much my mentalism act, but if I'm doing readings, one-on-one -on -one readings at a party or something like that, and I'm doing handwriting analysis or I'm doing uh, tarot cards or palmistry, yeah, body language, neuro-linguistic programming, a lot of those things. If you don't know about neuro-linguistic programming, it's a fascinating subject. It's, in some ways, it's the closest thing to real magic that you can get in a lot of ways because you really are looking at a person's mind, their outward reflections of what's going on in their mind show up in physical ways. And if you can read those things, they can't tell how you're knowing those things. And it's pretty, pretty amazing. So it does play a large part. And body language obviously is, I mean, if I'm at a, say I'm at a party and I'm sitting down and I'm doing readings, I can tell pretty much everything about that person that I'm going to say before they even open their mouth because I'm looking at their shoes, I'm looking at their jewelry, I'm looking at their body language, I'm looking at how drunk they are. All of these things focus in and tell me pretty much what that person's problem is. And then I lay the cards out and I'm just reflecting what the cards say. So do you used to use cards or anything like that? No. But so you use the book train. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so, I have a master's in mental health counseling. There you go. So yeah, I, I, definitely. I think all those things play into a good mentalist. That's what you're trained to do. Look, look for the things that other people are not trained to look for. Thank you. Sure. Hi there. I was uh, wondering if any of your books or if you've had any experience dealing with the uh, phenomenon called auras. Yes. Uh, I don't think it's a phenomenon, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, phenomenon is just a loose term. Yes, very loose. Uh, I was wondering what your opinion towards the phenomenon is. My opinion is that you can convince people of anything. <laughs> but here, here, here's how it works out, and this is in my book, Psychic Blues, that's coming out. And this is another one of those big secrets, so get your pencils ready. Uh, and I hate to throw cold water on what you're thinking about. I don't, I don't want you, I mean, this is my opinion, okay? In a psychic reading, it doesn't matter what tool I use. I can use, I can use cards, I can use rune stones, I can use a crystal ball, I can use handwriting. The point is, what you're doing is you're having a relationship with that person, okay? And if I develop a system all these things are systems. In other words, handwriting, the lines in the hand, that's a system that's been around for centuries. It hasn't changed. Uh, handwriting analysis, the certain loops, the swirls, the lines, the dots, the way the writing curves, that's a system. So you can make up a system for anything. You can take a box of crayons and you can assign green is money, pink is love, yellow is envy, and then you look at a person and you imagine their aura. So you're basically, you're drawing what you feel. Now, is it really an aura that's emanating from that person? There's no scientific proof of that. My point is, in my book, Psychic Blues, I did banana readings. <laughs> and you can go to my website and you can see I did with Randy when I was on a cruise, I did a banana reading. And basically I got two minutes. The banana reading is, the way the person peels the banana tells me about their past. The way the person eats the banana tells me about their present, and the lines on the inside of the banana tell me about their future. And it's just as accurate as anything. I mean, if you li as long as you understand people and human nature and body language and NLP and all the things we've been talking about, you can do cat turds. You know? I mean, look, I'm serious. They used to use entrails and calves' livers and all the skulls and bones and all these things. So an aura. I'm not 
saying it doesn't exist, but if you can prove it, if you can prove that somebody emanates a specific color and you can match it up, I got 50 grand on the table for you. <laughs> so otherwise, it's imagination. One last question. Hi, I'm glad I got slipped in. Um, yes. I consider myself a skeptic, but yes. I've also had some odd successes with tarot, like yes. really strange successes. Absolutely, and I, I love wondering. tarot. I don't actually consciously look at their body language. In fact, I very rarely even look at them, but I've right. picked out weird things like, oh, they're your niece is going to be leaving her mother soon. You know, weird things right. like that. Right. How much do you think is just natural intuition, like trying to feel out the person? Or do you think I'm subconsciously reading their body language and getting readings from them? Or Well, okay, L yeah. let, me, let me try and give you the whole <laughs> picture on that. This is, again, my opinion. Many people will argue about this. It's not any one thing. It's just like last night we were talking about, there's not any one kind of ghost, okay? That all these things work together. All the things you said, your body language, the, your skill, your, your years of doing it. How many years have you done it? Since I was like 14. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, the more years you do this, the more you become sensitive to other people. And you realize that we are all more alike than we are different. So and one of, the, one of the skills I look, learned, which is in my book, and you might try this, see how this works. When you do a reading sometimes and you get stuck, it's like you get a writer's block, just start talking about yourself. Talk to the person about what your life is. And it's amazing because they'll go, wow. You know, like you go, well, I'm having some money problems and I had a car, you're having a car. You just project your life onto the other person and people will just go, Man, that guy was dead on with everything he said. But let me just end by saying this. In the, tar the tarot pack is an ancient form of divination. Not that ancient, but it started out as a card game. Okay, And this is, they say, where we get our regular pack of cards from. The major arcana, I'm sure you're familiar. Do you use the whole pack or do you just use the majors? The whole, the whole thing. Yeah. The idea is they are archetypes especially the major arcana. Archetypes meaning these are cards, these are images that are common to all people, no matter whether you're here or you're in Egypt or you're anywhere in the world. And there's love, money, travel, health, strength, all the things that we're concerned with as human beings. So when you lay them out, they're, they're going to be common to that person. And if they're not, there's something that they aspire to, so they want it to be part of their life. So a lot of times, like I said, in my experience, yeah, you get incredible accuracy. But really what it is, is you're just storytelling. And that's, to me, that's what it's going to come down to. For all of us here at DragonCon, I'm going to end with this. We are storytellers, okay? And after everything else is gone, that's what's going to be left. And that's why I prefer mentalism, because there's, no, there's really no props. You're telling a story. So keep telling stories is what I wanted to say to you, because that's, that's, what, we all, that's what we all hope for. And I try to give people a little hope by what I do, but I also try and help them be a little more skeptical in the future so that the hopes are real instead of false hopes. Thanks for coming by. Come and see my book. Thank you.